If you need to update your deck, go to 50cards.shop. Get 5% off your next purchase when you use code NEXUS. Welcome back, guys, to another deck profile. Today, we're going over my updated Youth Burke deck profile featuring DBT09 support. Um, it's been a long time coming and just a little bit of some changes, but I figure, you know, we can kind of show what the Youth Burke deck is looking like before we drop into set 10 in the next month. So yeah, without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump right into the deck profile. Starting off like we always do with our ride deck. So just kind of gonna go over real quick what we got. It's gonna be the same from the Youth Burke trial deck. We got our following youth, youth step youths. <laughs> Uh, our grade one youth, uh, which is the one where you soul blast like a top three for youth perk or a grade two or less unit and call it. Our grade two youth, uh, which is when you ride youth perk or a you know with the rebel dress ability, you kind of boss one, grab a grade two or greater from drop. And then our main ride of the deck, which is our Skyfall Arms youth perk. So it has the rebel dress ability and it also has that act ability to look at the top three add a rebel form card or call a grade two or less unit. So uh, being able to use that act ability is really helpful in the beginning. So I want to use it for my ride deck just to kind of get it off as soon as possible. Uh, and then going on to our main deck, going right into the grade threes, we got our other three copies of Skyfall Arms, you know, just so that we can persona ride. And then we got three more copies of, or I'm sorry, four copies of uh, Tempest. So Rebel Form Tempest um, is basically like Aura Geyser. What it does is when you Rebel Dress, you give your front row 5k, kind of lost one, reveal the top two cards of your deck, uh, and you choose one of your opponent's units with the uh, same grade as one of the revealed units, and it goes to the bottom of their deck. So you can get rid of something annoying. Uh, and the revealed cards go to your hand, so it's just adding two cards to your hand for kind of lost one, which is pretty nuts. It's just overall just a really good resource card, so I want to run four of it. And then our last Rebel Form card is three copies of Gust. So Gust is a card that lets you get an extra drive check. So when you perform Rebel Dress, if your opponent's at grade three or greater, you can discard a card and you can increase your drive by one and get 10k. So um, when you perform your Rebel Dress, you lose the drive checks, but thanks to this, you can get a single drive out of it. And then thanks to cards like um, Sequana, uh, you can maybe even get up to a twin drive. So this can uh, be a really good kill turn as well. So those are our grade threes for the deck. We're just gonna go ahead and jump right into our grade twos. Starting off with a new card, I am running three copies of Dole Break, which is one of the cards that came out in DBT09. So what Dole Break does when your Vanguard is placed by the Rebel Dress ability, you can choose your Vanguard and give it 5k, so just to make it a little bit bigger. Second skill is when it attacks, you can Soul Blast a card of Rebel form in its name, and this unit's gonna get 10k. So every time um, at the end of your turn, when you're done Rebel Dressing, the Rebel form unit goes into your soul. So this is a good, uh, you know, second uh, Rebel form turn swing and then every turn you're just gonna be able to keep using it. So it's a really, really good beater, and on top of the Persona Ride, you're looking at 30k by itself, and then with triggers, potentially 40k, so it's just a really big, big, beefy guy, and those big, beefy numbers could definitely come in handy. So I'm gonna run three copies of that, and then I'm running three copies of Kybri, because Kybri is just a really, really, really stupid good card. So what Kybri does, is when it's placed on rear, you kind of blast soul blast, look at top three, and you call a grade two or less. And if it's a grade three, you can add it to your hand. So this kind of helps you get your rebel form units. It helps you build your board. So either way, you're you're getting something good out of this. So you can't go wrong with Kyber. And lastly, for grade twos, I am running two copies of Schneisel because Schneisel is our shuffler. So what Schneisel does is you kind of blast one when it's placed, look at top five, add a youth burk card. So that can be anything in rebel form or skyfall. And the second skill is when it attacks, if your vanguard was placed this turn by riding from a grade three, so through rebel dress, you can choose one of your vanguards and it gets an extra 5k. So just to make it a little bit beefier as well. Uh, we're only running two of the Schneisel for, you know, counter blasting, but also because um, Kybri and Schneisel kind of do the same thing for the most part. So they're kind of competing for counter blast, but in the end, I kind of like using the Kybri 
um, since they both shuffle your deck anyway. So they're both both good for helping you prevent your deck from being stacked. So um, really digging this grade two lineup, honestly. Good mix of uh, resource making and uh, power. Uh, speaking of power, I am running four copies of Sequana for our grade, first grade one. The reason I say power is because this unit gains an additional 2K uh, when you add Youth Burke, and then also it increases uh, or changes your Vanguard's drive to one when you perform your Rebel Dress. So that way you can still get your Rebel Dress off when you go into um, Tempest, and you can also get Twin Drive when you go into Gust. So this is just a really, really, really good card. It also fills up your soul as well, which is really nice. Definitely want to run for that. Then I am running three copies of Therapy Angel, which is another like kind of 10k booster. So it can't be called normally from your hand and it cannot be ridden uh, just because it's a 10k base. Second skill is when this is discarded during your turn. If you have a grade three or greater Vanguard, you can Soul Blast one and call this to a back row rearguard circle. So since Tempest has that uh, Soul Blast one discard skill, um, you can use that to discard this for cost and then call it right back out kind of helping you still fuel your board and make use of discard targets. Um, then we're also running one copy of Enucleate. <laughs> I'm definitely butchering that. Enucleate Angel. Uh, what this does is when your Vanguard's placed by riding from a grade three, so through Rebel Dress, you can Soul Blast one, retire this, counter charge one, choose one of your Vanguard's and get 5K. A lot of decks are using two copies of this just to guarantee the counter charge. I like it the one, but if you want, you can kind of play around the ratios and uh, run another one if you want. Um, I do like it at the one for now, just because I'm kind of doing pretty well mitigating and managing my counter blast as it is, and the one copy has been working for me. All right, then for grade ones, I am running our three PGs. This is our Palladium Zeal, which is like a uh, it's our Aegis Mare clone, so it's um, if you have two or more cards in hand when you PG, you have to discard. If you have one or less, you don't have to discard. So we're running three of that because we are running our one Elementaria. So Elementaria is um, if your opponent's Vanguard has triple drive, you can pay the cost for free. So if you're against a grade four, and then also um, this doesn't go into the guard circle, it goes into the order zone, so you can get around guard restricts like Flagberg. So it doesn't hurt to run it, and you can only run one Elementary in the deck, so we are running the one. And that is it for the Grade Ones. Now we're finishing on off with our trigger units, starting off with our Over Trigger. So this is, uh, God, I can barely read its name. Durahal? See, it's, it's, the, it's the other, uh, you know, world art for Keto Sanctuary. It has the exact same effect as a Mar or Martinoa. Um, your rear guards can perform drive checks, so drive checks are nice, but if you want to run the Cray Elemental one that gives two units 100 million, you can do that as well. Or you can wait until Fighters Collection and run the Cray Elemental that lets your rear guard restand, which is also good. So for now, running the Keter Sanctuary, Over Trigger, and going into our crits. So I am running four Blade Fetter. Uh, four Blade Fetter because uh, you can accidentally call some triggers from the deck with cards like Kybri. And if you really need a call target with Youth Burke, you can pull out some triggers as boosters. But what these do is at the end of the battle, they boost, you can put the soul, it gives them a like 2K. So at least it helps you fill your soul. So it's, you know, not really being too vanilla and losing triggers in your deck. But we are running a crit. So we are running uh, four more of the ones from the trial deck. And then we are running three fronts. This is our Alpax, which is our fronts that gain an extra five and your opponent's at grade three, so it's an extra shield. And since you're drawing a bunch of cards at Tempest anyways, we don't really need the draw triggers unless you really want to deck out. So the fronts do come in handy and just kind of add some more power to those uh, big old beefy units. Then for heal triggers, we are running three of our trial deck heals. These are just our vanilla heal triggers, the 15k shield. And then I'm running one copy of Hardiness tier, uh, which is our 10k shield heal trigger, but it has the effect where if your opponent's unit gained a critical by a card ability, not by a trigger, you can get an extra 15 shields. So this is really good against your Ava matchup uh, when your opponent is running Upsigi died and they call it and it gains a crit. It's also really good against Barrow Magnes, Bazorga, um, the upcoming meta when we have the new Dread Jewel that gains a crit. These are all going to be cards that are going to be really helpful against those matchups. 
So maybe in the future you might want to go two and two. Uh, for now, I'm just doing the one, but I've played around with running two as well and it works just fine. Um, but yeah, you can also run the van four vanilla heels. This is just kind of like splashing in for scenarios, but you never know. So that's it for my triggers and for the deck overall. Um, as you've noticed, not much has changed other than the fact that we are running three of Dolbreg. Um, I do like Dolbreg because he, while he's kind of uh, underwhelming on paper and you might prefer to have the resources with um, Kyberi or with Schneisel, you might just want to run the full four Schneisels, but I do like the Dolbreg just because you have plenty of soul to work with and the power can help a lot especially when you're trying to push for game and your opponent is generating tons of hand because they're playing Chrono Jet. <laughs> Being able to kind of like waste away your opponent's hand and force them out with some PGs is really nice, especially when it's on a rear guard. So uh, give, give Dolbreg a chance, you know? You know, let, it, let, him, let him have his moment. He's a, tri he's a triple R. <laughs> That's pretty much it, guys. Thanks for watching and we'll see you all in the next one. And hopefully we'll get some games in with this too. All right, that's it. Bye.